In this video, I'll give an overview of the architecture of the AVR microprocessor. As I mentioned before, the AVR chips contain both flash memory and static RAM memory. Instructions must go into the flash memory, and the flash memory contains only instructions. It's organized as a series of 16-bit words. So it's not organized as a series of bytes, but instead of 16-bit words. Every instruction is either 16 or 32 bits. That is, either 2 bytes or 4 bytes. So every instruction is either one word or two words. The registers are 8 bits in size. So fundamentally, this is an 8-bit processor. There are 32 registers. In certain instructions, it's con more convenient to uh, address registers 0 through 15. So in some cases, the first 16 registers are treated a little bit uh, differently. But there are basically 32 registers in the system. The registers are mapped into low memory addresses. That means you can use the same instructions that address memory to address these low memory ad, uh, locations, and you'll find the data that's stored in the registers. Another way to look at this is that all data is in static RAM, but if the data happens to be in the first 32 bytes of static RAM, then it's easy and convenient to address it. So if we look at the static RAM, we see that addresses between hex 00 and 1F that is the first 32 bytes, contain the registers. They are the registers. The 64 bytes beyond that are reserved for I.O. registers. And then beyond that, there are another 160 bytes that are reserved for memory mapped registers. These are essentially uh, I.O. registers as well. And then from hex 100 and up, you have just general memory that's the rest of the static RAM. So in the case of the chip that we're looking at, we have uh, 1,792 bytes of static RAM. Other versions of the AVR processor have different amounts of uh, static RAM and flash. The processor has a two-stage pipeline. At any point in time, one instruction is being fetched and one instruction is being executed. While the current instruction is being executed, the next instruction to be executed is being fetched from memory. So these two steps are done simultaneously. Most instructions take a single cycle. So in the first cycle, there, it's fetched. In the second cycle, it's executed. But on average, one instruction is executed every cycle. So instructions that take this one cycle um, mean that uh, a chip that's running at uh, 1 megahertz for the clock speed is going to execute 1 million instructions per second. The chip that we're looking at has a clock speed of 16 megahertz, which means 16 million instructions per second are being executed. So I said most instructions take a single cycle. And uh, there are other instructions, however, that take longer, 2, 3, 4, or even 5 cycles. For example, to do a 16-bit add, we'll see that it takes 2 cycles. And with multiply, it takes more as well. Uh, the load and store instructions, which move data to and from uh, static RAM to the register area, and branch instructions also take 2 cycles. So. We're looking at the instruction set architecture, the way memory is organized, the way the registers are organized, and the individual instructions and how the instructions are encoded and executed. That's the instruction set architecture. Um, AVR um, stands for the names of uh, a couple of people that uh, designed the initial version of the processor. Uh, this came out of the Norwegian Institute of Technology, uh, which uh, went into Nordic uh, semiconductor. The uh, chip was originally designed to execute C code, and the Arduino chips and the AVR chips are programmed uh, primarily in C. I mentioned that the registers R0 through R31 are 8-bit registers. 
but there are also three 16-bit registers which are called X, Y, and Z. These are overlapping with uh, the 8-bit registers and in particular X is nothing more or less than registers 26 and 27. Y is 28 and 29 and Z is 30 and 31. So the registers are mapped into main memory. So if we look at static RAM, uh, we see the registers starting with R0 and going all the way to R31. And if you look at these registers, where they're stored, these are the addresses of RAM, where they're stored. You can see that the last six bytes are used for the X, the Y, and the Z register. And you can also notice that, by the way, the most significant byte is stored, uh, that these are stored in little Indian order. Beyond the registers, we have the I.O. registers, which are also called I.O. ports. In addition to the data registers, there is also a status register. This contains some special bits that are assigned after every arithmetic instruction and the status register is used in branch instructions. So after an arithmetic instruction has set the status bits, it can be followed with a branch instruction which will test the status bits and conditionally branch. The status register has eight bits and each has a special unique meaning. Uh, we have the carry bit which is set when, uh, for example, an addition uh, carries out of the most significant bit. The zero bit, which is set to one when the result is all zeros. A negative or sign bit, which reflects the most significant bit for two's complement arithmetic. A bit called overflow, and then another bit that's related to uh, testing overflow. Uh, there's also a half carry bit. And uh, there is something called BCD, which is binary coded decimal. This is something from the past. It's a way of representing decimal numbers w in bytes with uh, bits. Uh, so for example, the decimal number 69 can be represented in a byte uh, like this, where you have the bit patterns that uh, for six and nine, but uh, this is not a binary number. This is a decimal number. So when addition occurs, um, there's some special stuff that has to go on. Um, and in particular, you have the carry between uh, this digit, this decimal digit, and the next decimal digit. That's the half carry. So the half carry is used for doing arithmetic in decimal using this binary coded decimal system. Um, there is also a T bit. So in certain uh, situations, uh, there are instructions that set the T bit and uh, you can use it uh, in various ways. So it's kind of a, a working bit, if you will, uh, for bit operations. Um, and finally, there's the interrupts enabled bit that determines whether the uh, code that's being executed can be interrupted uh, or, or whether the interrupts are currently disabled. There is a hardware stack and so there's a register called SP for stack pointer. This is a 16-bit register that points to the top of the stack. The stack is stored in static RAM and it grows downward just as, as on many processors. The stack pointer, the stack top register, is defined as an I.O. register. So uh, in fact, it is memory mapped into the memory locations with the address 3D and 3E. So this is where the stack pointer is stored. The stack pointer is automatically initialized on power up to point to the last uh, location, the end of uh, static RAM, so that the stack can be used immediately. And the stack is used in instructions like push and pop as well as the call instruction and the return instruction. So the stack is used very much like it's used in other processors. Um, it is, however, a 16-bit uh, stack pointer. These chips don't have a whole lot of static RAM, so 16 bits is adequate. 
Remember that flash memory contains instructions and only instructions. In the chip we're discussing, the flash memory size is 16K words, where a word is two bytes in length. Other AVR chips have different amounts of flash, but the chip we're talking about has 16K words. Instructions are two bytes in length. Uh, some instructions are twice as long and take up four bytes, but the basic instructions go into one word per instruction in the flash memory. The program counter is 14 bits in length, which is exactly the right amount to address any one of these 16K words of flash memory. So here's a picture of what flash memory looks like. Okay, we see that instead of it being a byte-oriented memory, where every byte has a different address. It's a word-oriented memory, where the word size is 16, and every word has a unique address, starting low memory going up to the highest uh, word of memory. Uh, here you can see we have uh, 14 bits, uh, th 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus uh, 2 more bits. That's 14 bits to address uh, all of the words in memory. The flash memory is divided into two sections. One will contain the boot loader, which is used to read in the application program. And the other section will contain the application program.